Okay, so now we're going to talk about blog posts, which is the key thing when it comes to blogging, is your blog posts. It's like your updates on Facebook or on Twitter, um, and it's really what blogging is all about. It's the new articles that you write every so often, which people come back to to read your blog and comment and engage with you. So... Um, to set up a post, you go to posts, <laughs> right? It's called a blog post. And you'll see that there's one blog post already, and it's been authored by me, <laughs> Dylan Cromart, and it's in a category called uncategorized. Now, um, you can either change that post or you can delete that post, but it's the one that's over there, first blog post. Okay? Now, I'm going to leave that one there for now, and I'm going to add a new post. So you just go to add new. Okay? Right. And as you can see, it looks very similar to uh, what pages look like in terms of uh, the back, back end. Uh, there's just a few differences, like here on the side. You can choose the type of post you want it to be, and you can add categories and tags and a featured image. Okay? Now... In order to demonstrate uh, the different aspects of a blog post, I'm going to use an article I recently wrote for uh, as a reflection of a conveners meeting that I went to in Johannesburg for a um, organisation called Haltasa, which is the Higher Education, Learning, and Teaching Association of South Africa, Southern Africa. <laughs> okay. And I'm just going to copy it. So it's good to write your blog post sometimes in a good word editor like Microsoft Word. And then copy. And this is quite a long, let me check how many words. This is, okay, a thousand words. Most blog posts, okay, a short blog post is going to be about 400 words. Your average blog post is about 800 words. Okay, 400 to 800, although it depends. Maybe for uh, when you're starting out, um, 400 words is, is good. And then you can work your way up to 800. And then this is a this is a longer, uh, starting to become a bit of a longer blog post. 800 and above is a bit longer. So just copy that and pop it in here. Okay. So the reason I'm posting this up is because this is part of my profession. This is part of me branding myself as someone in higher education who is um, going to higher education related meetings. I'm not only involved at my university. I'm also involved in... Uh, things that are going on in the higher education um, landscape in South Africa, and I'm, I'm getting involved in that. So this is a great way to brand myself as um, someone who's on the forefront of higher education in South Africa. Okay, so um, it was called, let me just copy that. Okay, help Tasa, um, right, convenience meeting, my reflections. Okay, Haltasa, Convenience Meeting. Uh, maybe I can do something like this. My Reflections. Okay? And here's very important. We don't want it to be... Um, the first thing is your permalink. This is the link that people are going to see at the top there. We want it to... Well, we want it to say... This. Haltasa, Convenience Meeting. So we're going to change that. See? Okay, there we go. Now, you can see the date, and you can see this slug. I think they call it a slug. If we look at the bottom here, let's see if we can see the slugs. No. If we go to the top, screen options, we want to see the slug. We want to see discussion. We want to see all of these. Okay, we want to see that as well. Why not? Screen options. Okay, now if we go to the bottom, you'll see the slug is Haltosa. Convenience meeting. We can change that. And the author is me. And um, we want to show likes and sharing buttons. Absolutely. And we want to allow comments this time. So you don't want to allow comments with your pages, but you because you don't a page is like a just a website a page. You don't want people to comment on that. But you do want people to comment and engage with your blog posts so that you can then respond and you can create a conversation. Okay. Right. So now let's have a look here. As you can see, you can change the type of, as far as I know, you can change the font at the moment. 
what font are we using here? Does it say? No, it doesn't. Okay, well, we'll see. I think it changes your font based on a toolbar toggle. Okay, there we go. And you can even change the size that you want it to be in. At the moment, it's paragraph sized. And it's actually currently, because I've um, taken it from Microsoft Word, it's got a certain type of formatting in it. As you can see, there's like bullet points and so on. If you want to remove the formatting, you can say clear formatting. Well, you should be able to say clear formatting. And uh, it will usually clear the formatting. Right. Now, um, you read, 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 read. Let's just check here. Okay, so it's got it like that. Okay, good. So it's, it's giving a paragraph spacer there, which is good. Right, so just that button over there is to toggle your toolbar if you want more options to work with over here. Now, let's say I want to link my... I mean, we're crafting a blog post. You don't just you don't just write something and pop it in there and then post it. You know, you need to create links, for example, to other... Uh, so here we go. Um, I'll show you. I'll give an example. So yeah, I introduce that I attended the Higher Education Learning and Teaching Association of South Africa Special Interest Group Conveners Meeting. Okay. Now, let's say I want to make a link to the Health Tossa website. Okay. So I go to Health Tossa, search for them. And you'll see there's their website, teltosa.org.za. Okay, now I'm going to copy that, control C, and I'm going to, I want to put it in here. I want to link this, right, to, maybe I'll just highlight all of it, actually. And I want to link, so I can say insert link there. Okay, insert the link, but I want to, I want the link to open in a new tab. That's very important. You need to click on that, okay? Otherwise, what happens is it will, it will go, instead of opening in a new tab, like over there, instead of going like that, opening in a new tab, it will go from your blog post that someone is reading and go to the Health Toss website. And that's not what you want. You don't want people to leave your um, website, okay? So you need to say, open in a new tab. And then we say, update. Okay, boom. There you can see. It's highlighted now, okay? And uh, we're going to split the interest group. Okay. Those who attended the meeting included three members. Okay. And so forth. The purpose of the six. Let me read it. And and then... Uh, write a bit more. And... I then give some information regarding some of the strategies that um, we as the you know, as the CPUT are going to be instituting for this thing called the Foundation SIG. Now, that content is not what's important at this point, but what is important is for you to understand that you need to um, craft it nicely and, and um, ensure that there's spaces between the paragraphs and that you have checked the spelling and the grammar. Okay? And then... What's also very important is thing, um, these things aside, once you've checked, you know, all the spelling and the grammar and actually amongst should be among, okay, and now you need to add categories. Now, categories, you only have one category usually, well, okay, you can have more than one category, but usually it's just one category per blog post. Now, this blog post is all about higher education. Okay. Now, I'm probably going to have blog posts about higher education. I will have blog posts about marketing. I'll have blog posts about personal branding. I'll have blog posts about digital marketing and teaching and so on and so forth. So, this category, I'm going to create a new category. I'm going to call it higher education. Now, every time I write a blog post about higher education, I'm going to uh, use this category so that people know when they click on higher education on my categories all my blog posts connected to higher education are going to come up and I'm going to say add new category okay now you must make sure that all your blog posts have a category that's very important for people to be able to find them okay then so the category you usually only have one 
Then we need to include things called tags. Now tags are like hashtags, right? So like on Twitter or on Facebook, the things that you have at the bottom, which helps people find um, and in a way summarizes what your blog post is about. So some of the tags that I'll include is things like uh, help us. That's one I'll include. Then another one I'll include is um, special interest groups. Now usually on a blog post you'll have uh, six to ten acts. Okay. Okay. Uh, are we foundation foundation sig is that's the sig that I represent. Uh, Cape Peninsula University of Technology. That's my university. CPUT for short. Is it all spelled correctly? Yes. Um, uh, conveners meeting. Conveners meeting. So you see, these are all the things that I mention in the blog post. All right. So you'll see there. At the top, I've got Haltasa. I've got um, special interest group. Conveners meeting. All right. So these are all the things that I will be including. I can include some of these, like research for academic development, um, um, and so on and so forth. What I feel is important that helps summarize my blog post. Okay. Let's do that as well. Okay, and there's another link. That's actually a link to the, um, the special interest group that I'm busy heading up, or helping to head up. That is the website address. Okay. So, which is already um, going to be going to there. As you can see, it's really linked up. Okay, so that's one, two, three, four, five. I wonder what else we can add. You don't want to add too many unnecessary things. Maybe we can do this one. Higher Education South Africa. Maybe that's a good one. Um, okay, that's fine. Hmm... Maybe we can also add something like strategy, something about the strategy um, to uh, uh, the strategy they're using is to encourage best sharing of best practice. Okay, so there we go. Uh, uh, um, best practice sharing. Okay, uh, strategy. That's good. Like I said, if you look at that, you can easily kind of get an idea of what the article or the blog post is about. Now, you can add a featured image. Now, if you look on my blog here, you'll see that this, this one has a featured image, which is that one over there. Now, let's say, okay, I want to add a featured image. This is the Haltasa website. Let's say, okay, let's, let's, let's say I want to add, okay, let's, let's go to images. So we open a new tab. Altasa, we search for Altasa, but we're going to click on uh, images. Altasa images, and as you can see here, uh, there's quite a few images that we can use. Let's say I want to use the Altasa uh, logo, okay, although it's very small actually, although, but let's let me click on it. Okay, let's have a look here. Now, as you can see, it's actually very small because it's the one that they use over there on their website. So I don't, you need to find a big enough image. But let's use that one and then you can see how it works. Now we say set featured image. Okay, now we can upload a file. If we go to our media library, we currently don't have that file. So now we've got to get the file from here, which is where it's, yeah, it's on Google. And we've got to get it to our blog. So we right click, say save image as. Save image as. Okay, we're going to call it Altasa website. So we'll save it up for now. Uh, Altasa logo, sorry. Logo. Save. Okay, it's going to download. Now, now drop it here. You can drop it from there where you've downloaded it, or you can download it, um, upload it from the website. You just drag it. Give it a moment over there like that or you can just select the file over there if you click on it okay so now we're uploading it good okay and there it is help toss logo and you can add a caption 
and a description and these things become important eventually for um, SEO purposes but don't worry about that for now okay we say set featured image okay there it is boom is the featured image wonderful and this is an excerpt this is like a summary of your blog post which is good to have because it also helps um, when people are searching for your blog posts on Google all right so in this blog post or you can say um, Dylan attended the uh, Heltasa conveners meeting okay maybe you can say Dylan reflects reflects on his experience at the Heltasa conveners meeting in Johannesburg Miss Berg, in which at which <laughs> he shared um, the strategy two year two, oh, two year uh, strategy that has been planned planned for the okay that's that's fine okay so that is pretty much we got a uh, featured image we've got a little um, excerpt we've got uh, a category very important and yeah usually most blog posts are going to be standard unless you've you know you want it to be an audio post or a chat or yeah, you can you can play around with these but this is just a standard blog post and a side blog post is one that remains at the top of your blog forever <laughs> well not forever but as long as it's an aside post it's a very important blog post um but yeah you can have a you can play with that um right so yeah that's that's it for now Here's yeah, something important. You can publish your blog posts immediately so that they go out immediately, or you can set a date and a time when you want them to go out. So this is good. So let's say on a Saturday, you're going to spend some time doing lots of blog posts. Let's say you do five blog posts, but then you can set them to come out uh, one per week for the next five weeks. So then the people reading your blog posts are getting them in um, kind of, chunks they're getting them every week so it's giving them a whole week to read your blog posts but if you just post them all at once then it's going to overwhelm people so it's good to sometimes publish it uh, in a with a delayed you know in a delayed way and setting schedules uh, for each blog post and you know you can plan that but this one I'm going to publish immediately so I'm just going to say cancel and I'm going to say publish Let's see what happens. I should probably made that 2016 convenience meeting, but anyway, <laughs> we'll change that afterwards. Okay, so it's all right. So there it says it is now published. Okay, so if we go here to our blog and we say refresh on the home page, there we go. You'll see that my featured image is there. The title is there, the date is there, and there is a little excerpt. Can you see it? So this blog doesn't bring up the full blog post. It only brings up the featured image, the title, the date, and the category, remember? And it brings up the little excerpt you know, that I wrote. And then it brings up the little tags. See? Hashtags. Now... The way this is set, if I want to read this blog post, I'm going to have to click on it. Boom. Let's click on it. And then you'll see it will bring up the entire blog post that people can enjoy reading. And you'll see that the little links are... There we go. That link changes to green. And this link over here also changes. And you can change the colors of your links. It depends on the theme that you've got as well. Every theme has different links. Now, if someone wants to, um, they can hear some of the tags. If they want to read other things about what I've written on these tags, they can click on it. They can share this on Facebook and Twitter. They can reblog it. They can like it. 
And there's my image, you know, there's me as the author. And there it talks about post within Chromat and it gives that little excerpt that we wrote in the Gravatar profile. Okay? And you can, so people can leave a comment if they like, and then I can uh, respond to their comment. And that is very simply a blog post. Quite simple. Okay. So I can write, maybe I can change it here 2016. I'll toss a convener's meeting. And I can just update it. So if you want to ever make changes, you can, but the actual date will not change. The date that you published it will always remain the same no matter how many times you update it. That's very important. Okay? So if we now update, you'll see there it says 2016. Okay, great. And those are some of the basics of posting.